Hello YouTube, I am here to show you my last build of this year. Um, this is gonna be a Dark One plus Nightbringer Conjurer. I hope you're gonna enjoy this one. Alright, so here we are in Grim Tools. This is the Conjurer I'm gonna talk about. It's using the 4-piece Dark One set and the Nightbringer together with the belt here, the Nulan Valgoth girdle, to convert like 100% elemental to vitality. And also to convert like lots of acid and chaos damage to vitality, as you will see later when I talk about the gear. First of all, as always, let's talk about the skills. So we are a occultist and a shaman. Um, the Dark One set focuses around Bloody Pox and Winnego Totem. Um, but also, since we have lots of conversion, also lots of points to Sigil of Consumption, we have basically three main abilities, right? So Bloody Pox, Sigil of Consumption, and Winnego Totem. So first of all, let's talk about the occultist class here. Um, I'm gonna use Curse of Frailty, this is just a one pointer, but we have like lots of plus skills to occultists here. So one point, Curse of Frailty, and then 15 out of 10 points into vulnerability. I could put this to 16, but I chose to put some more points into the aspect of the Guardian to get more physical resistance. Um, vulnerability, well, it reduces enemy DA and also enemy, enemy vitality resistance, so in this case, like perfect for this build, right? Um, our main ability, number one, Bloody Pox. This one maxed out, second node maxed out for the vitality damage, and the third node just a one pointer to get like bonus duration, and also, well, poison damage gets partially converted to vitality as well, so we have some vitality decay here on top. Also, wasting is really, really amazing, like, hard capping wasting is so good here. Minus 350 OA is like a huge debuff to enemies, and also, yeah, 158 void damage. It's like, maxing out this is more important than the first part actually. Next up we got Solar's Witchfire, just the one pointer here and the one pointer here to just get like the percent bonuses from vitality damage here. We don't really need the attack speed, we also don't need the flat vitality damage here or the flat chaos over here. We don't really care about weapon damage that much. The abilities that we use don't use weapon damage in the first place and like the Nightbringer two-hander, if we needed any we weapon damage from say Devotion, so we will get to that later. Uh, the Vitality 2-hander already has huge amount of like weapon damage already. So you don't really need these like additional sources as badly on as say on a dual wield build. Next up we got a Sigil of Consumption, both the Sigil and Destruction maxed out. Um, really great, lots of Vitality damage, super high leech. And Fire and Chaos is also really great because we do convert 100% of the Fire to Vitality and about I believe my setup had around 90% Chaos to Vitality conversion as well, so yeah, that's pretty huge. Um, next up we got Blood of Dreek, this is a must-have on any Occultist, and also Aspect of the Guardian, same for this. Now usually you just put Aspect of the Guardian to say 12 points, right? But since this build is very heavy on physical resistance already, getting Aspect of the Guardian on top that's pretty great, because like the more physical resistance you already have, the more efficient it's gonna become to get even more on top, right? Because like every percent that you reduce, the more you already have, the more effective that 1% is gonna become, right? Last but not least, I also have Possession. This is the exclusive skill, this is also the only source of absorption, apart from Dark One set. We will come to that later as well. This one gives me 19% damage absorption at 20 out of 12 points. Um, I also tried like a setup where you have like 22 out of 12 possession, but then you wouldn't be able to like max out wasting, so yeah. Possession at 20 out of 12 is like the best you can go for here. Gives you uh, chaos resistance, skill disruption protection, um, percent vitality damage, some flat chaos which gets partially converted to vitality, and yeah, 90% damage absorption, really good. Next up we got the Shaman class, Shaman Mastery. Um, now we are actually using a 200, so like this line here is I think like decent enough to like take one pointers in all of these because you actually do default attack every now and then between your like abilities that you cycle between um, but it's not really worth it to like put more than one point here in my opinion just one pointers here is like good enough when you go totem now this is the third main ability of the skill I um, mean of this build so this one has lots of vitality damage especially from the dark one set and yeah just by itself already as well. That's really good. And yeah, 22 points here because, well, we can. And like one pointer in Bloody Pact, a Blood Pact. This one, well, it gives you some additional like life steal on top for like one point. 60% is really great. 64% with damage for one point is also really great. And 25 flat damage is also okay. 
Like, for one point, this is insane. It's not really worth it to max it out, though, because, again, we're not really a default attacker build. It's more of a smelly CDR caster that uses default attacks in between. So, yeah, default attacks are not the main focus of this build. Um, Savagery, same goes for this. This is a default attack replacer, but note that we're only one pointing the first node here, and then maxing out the second node just to get OA and DA. Now, this is just to get, like, more OA and DA for the build, and to get also slow resistance and HP regeneration... Which we actually don't really need that much because we're mainly using Leech and not HP regen. But it's still really good. Like, every Shaman two-hander should probably use this, not only because of the tenacity of the boar, but also because of Might of the Bear. Like, this alone might sometimes not be good enough to pick up when you're, like, not using a two-hander. But if you're using a two-hander, then Might of the Bear as well makes this whole line, like, worth picking up, I would say. This one gives you 8% more Fizzras, and this one OA and DA, and that's, like, really good. And yeah, I mean, you do have the time to do some default attacks every now and then between all these skills. Not that much, but a little bit. And like, a little bit is enough to at least have always one stack of savagery active. And one stack is enough to have both the bonus from Tenacity of the Boar and Tenacity um, and Might of the Bear like active at full effect, like at 100%. You don't have to have more than one stack active to gain the effects of these. One stack is enough. Like, the charge levels here are just for the damage, but not for these um, buffs. Also, one point is Storm Touch, because why not? We are converting the Electric damage to Vitality Decay, like 100% of this damage is actually with Decay. And some more at attack speed, which I guess it just makes like attacking in between stuff a little bit smoother, but we don't really need it. Okay. Um, but like for a one pointer, it's fine, I think. It's good enough for a one pointer. Devouring Swarm, this is um, the second main debuff besides uh, Curse of Frailty. Or like vulnerability. This one reduces vitality resistance by 60%. This is like the main reason why shamans are so great for support class for vitality builds. Like just one skill here reducing enemy vitality resistance by 60% is insane. This is usually what two masteries together can do. And yeah, that's like yeah, you just use this. It's really good at soft cap, like hard cap doesn't really do that much, like 1% with rest per point, after that it's not as effective as, I don't know, 3 or even more than that per point, right, that you get before this. So yeah, soft cap, really good here. Uh, McDonald's pack, just a 1-pointer, we don't really need more energy, so yeah, also we don't care about the flat physical, 1-pointer is good enough. Out of the wild, soft cap at 10 out of 10, for like the 30% HP, really good. Um, not really worth it to hard cap here, I would say, just good enough at 10 out of 10. Oak skin, though usually you can also just put this at 10 out of 10, as you can see effectiveness diminishes a little bit after that. But like, to get some additional armor, some additional pierce and aether resistance, it was pretty nice to overcap this, and like, I had the points left, I didn't need to like put something, put them somewhere else. Um, if you don't have like all the items here, like if you don't have the Nightbringer for example, you might be a little bit more points starved, and then certainly you can drop Oak skin down to 12, uh, down to 10, or you can drop down Aspect of the Guardian down to 12, right? Now these are, this, these are hard capped just because I have like the luxury of so many points left. Um, don't get debated by Doomball though, even though we are like converted, converting lots of Chaos to Vitality. We don't have the plus skills to Doomball, and we don't have the like CDR or this, or the energy cost reduction for this. Um, so picking up Doom Bolt will just make, like, will just give you energy problems and not really add anything to your build. Alright, that's gonna be it for uh, the Masteries. Let's check out the Devotions as well. So for Devotions, since I'm converting lots of Acid, Chaos and Elemental to Vitality, this will be very interesting here. So first of all, let's start up with the standard stuff. So tier 3 devotions, vitality means you're using Will of Ratosh for vitality resistance reduction, must have for any vitality build. Also, this is a leech build, so life leech resistance also becomes really, really strong for this build. Second tier 3 devotion that is a must have for almost all vitality builds is Hungering Void. Really good here as well, crazy good. Lots of crit damage, 370 with damage, and also like OA and DA on the notes here. Really, really strong devotion. Um, now, Tip the Scales got actually buffed last patch, and because of that, I'm using Tip the Scales here. And it's really good, it also helps you a little bit with energy and life leech on top of all, like, all the other life leech that you already got. And it also is your flat um, resistance reduction of this build, like 25 flat RR on this one, pretty good. Um, 
Alternatively, you could go for the Revenant. But a Revenant got nerfed a little bit. It's still good though. Um, but Revenant is more for like a well default attacker build, right? And this one is not a default attacker, so actually scales uh, better than Razor Dead here. If this was like more default attack focus, I would probably use Razor Dead instead of Scales of Ukama here. Uh, we are also still using a two-hander, uh, even though Kraken is like not necessarily that good for like a non-speed-based two-hander build, because like these give you attack speed and casting speed, which are not really required. But it also has like pretty nice crit damage, total damage, and physical resistance, and it also fits the build, like fits the devotion build here pretty nicely. Um, so yes, I'm still using the Kraken here, really good for two-handers in general, and also for this build, like still good enough. And then we have the fillers, Lotus, Panther, Eo, and Jackal. Pretty decent fillers overall. Also, Lotus gives you additional physical resistance. And now, this is where it becomes interesting. Now, this is a Vitality build that does not use Twin Fangs. Um, usually, you would expect a Vitality build like this to use either Twin Fangs or maybe Wendigo, right? But I chose to go for Flame Torrent and Guardian's Gaze. And the reason for that is that we do convert like around 90% of Chaos to Vitality if you have good rolls. Um, 40 to 60 percent, depending on your rolls, as a damage to vitality as well. So this one is pretty high on vitality damage already. And also, this one got buffed last patch as well. And also, I wanted to try it kinda. And this is kind of a melee caster build, and Guardian's Gaze is really good when you're always in melee. So yeah, this one is great for the build. And Flame Torrent is also really good if you're new playing melee, right? Because Flame Torrent like circles around you as well, kind of similar to Guardian's Gaze. And also, we're converting. We have like full conversion of the fire to vitality, 100% there, and then like again, 80 to 90% chaos to vitality. Uh, so yeah, these are really good for this build, but only because we have this conversion. Like if you don't have the conversion ready yet, like if you don't have the belt, if you don't have the weapon, for example, just go with that and take something else maybe instead of Guardian's gaze, like I don't know, the hawk or the raven. Right? You don't really need the purple stuff here. The purple is kind of wasted, but. The Guardian's Gaze is like such a nice and such a cool devotion. If you don't have the full conversion, maybe also consider just using Bat instead of Fiend and still keeping Guy off the Guardian. Like, uh, you can have the, exactly the same devotion setup with Bat instead of Fiend because they have like the same amount of points required and give you the same amount of uh, complete constellation bonus, right? Now, a lot of people have been asking for how do you make these devotion happen, right? Like, many people have been asking in the chat, can you give me like a step by step making of these devotion? All right, I'm gonna give you here one in the video that's gonna be make it easier for you and me as well. Now, what was the first thing I got? I went for while leveling. It was bad, obviously, right? Like, you were leveling as a vitality character, so you want the bat. The bat is just really good, and you probably put it to Devouring Swarm early on because. Or Bloody Fox, depending on which one you choose first, right? You're leveling with either the Wrong Swarm first, or Bloody Fox first, and then the other one second, right? Um, probably, like, Swarm first and Fox second, that's probably even better. Um, you can check out my speed leveling video for that, how I did it there to check it properly. But, I mean, I always start at, like, level 15 because of merits and experiments, potions, etc. So that's a little bit scuffed, maybe, if you're, like trying this build out as your first build, because actually the build is pretty nice for a beginner, I would say. The Dark One set is really good for beginners, and this one is not that easy to get for beginners, but it can be target farmed, and it's like a late game option, for, or like late game goal for you to go for, right? And these ones, like these can be farmed as well, like target farmed as well. Um, you don't have to like get super crazy FXs here, as you will see later. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna talk about that later. First off, let's talk about Devotions here. So, yeah. That was the first thing I went for. Then I went for Eye of the Guardian, and I went for the Fiend. Like, we want to get these tier 1 devotions as soon as possible to also level them. Um, this is a little bit crazy early on because you want, like, I mean, you have, like, this to proc, you have Bloody Pox to proc, to proc, and then you want Sigilo to proc, right? You want these three to proc. So, first off, you pick up uh, the Swarm and that, then you pick up, like, Bloody Pox and the Guardian, and then you pick up Sigilo and the Flame Torrent. Uh, now you have like damage for days, right? <laughs> Pretty nice AoE damage at least, really good. And next up we want to go for Ratosh and actually the scale is probably first. Now scale just needs yellows, right? So we just want more yellows. Also we need more yellows because of Ratosh anyway. Um, you can, if you want to, go for the Jackal in between. Like you can pick up the Jackal now or you can pick up, to pick up the Jackal later after you picked up the scales. 
Um, it kind of depends on like if you want more speed, and I guess usually you want more speed. So early on, I would probably pick up Jack at first, and then go for the yellows. Like you'll go for this crossroads here, then you can pick up the crane, you can pick up the line, and boom, you're ready at scales. Then you pick up the scales, and then you take out the line again. Uh, this is how you get to the scales, and then you put those to I don't know. The last which far is probably actually your first um, like aura that you can go for, right? Because you will get this anyway. Like at yeah, when you have play pox, you can always like put one point here, just have this active, just the one pointer is enough to, and then you bind scales to this, right? And I mean yeah, there you go. Like we already can use Ratosh, so you're gonna use Ratosh as well, and. I would suggest you to put Ratosh on Curse of Feralty here, uh, which should be pretty easy to get as well. You don't really have to use this part, only start using Curse of Feralty once you have Vulnerability as well. <clears throat> because the first part is kind of useless for this build. Um, Alright, next up we also want to go for the Dying God, right? Dying God needs 8 red and 15 blue. Now, how do we achieve that? Well, we just go for more blue, right, first. So. How do we get more blue? For example, E is pretty good for that. So you get like a blue crossroads here, right? You take the eel, and then we take the panther. And also, I mean, before the panther, you should probably take the kraken, right? You are using a two-hander, so the kraken is really nice. Um, maybe you're actually not using a two-hander. If you're not using a two-hander, you shouldn't take the kraken, but take, take the wiper instead. Like, the wiper has literally the same uh, constellation bonuses, as you can see. 3 blues, 2 red. Um, and also the croc at the same time... I mean, the viper at the same time gives you like more offensive ability, right? So this is pretty nice when you're not, you're not using a 2-hander. If you're not using a 2-hander while leveling, use the viper. If you are using a 2-hander, use the croc instead. Um, yeah, then next up we wanted to go for the panther, right? And how many more blues do we need? 3 more, right? It was like Lotus and something else for blues, right? Did I go for the Watcher? I guess I was actually using the Watcher, right? So yeah, once you are at 12 blue, I mean 10 blue, or like 12 in this case of the Panther, you go for the Watcher, right? And then you take out the Crane again, right? Yes. No? Oh, you can put like... How do we do this? Yeah, we need 8 for that, right? So we need the Lotus first. Yeah, we need the Lotus first. There you go. Oh, wait. We need more points, though. What the hell? Um, but there you go. Okay. Um, now we need to decide, do we want the Fiend or do we want the Bat, right? Now it's probably time to say goodbye to the Bat. You have served us well, Bat. Wait, this doesn't work. Okay, okay, okay. So before we take the Watcher, we actually have to take the Lotus, right? Yeah, we take the Lotus. Now this frees up points for taking out the Bat, right? Yeah, there we go. So we take out the Bat. And now we can use the Watcher with that. And once you have the Watcher, take out the Crane. Well, once you take out the Crane, you can also take out this one because you only need 8 blues, right? But we do need 8 rats, so we take this point instead. And then we just take Dying God, right? And if you're not using a two-hander, then this is it, right? But if you are using a two-hander, before you take Dying God, you're gonna take out Viper, if you had Viper before, and use the Kraken, or like if you had the Kraken, then it was like this anyways. And then you have the Dying God, right? There you go. Hello? There you go. And you put this to, I don't know, Surgery, for example. Uh, there you go. These are like the final devotions for this build. Now let's talk about the gear. The gear for this character might seem really overwhelming at first, but if, if you think about it, it's actually a very nice build for beginners. First of all, Vitality casters are always good for beginners in Grim Dawn. They're really good, they have lots of leech, they're really easy to gear in general, like in all kinds of ways, and Conjurer is like a very perfect class for that as well. First of all, we have the Dark One set, right? The Dark One set can be farmed in the Dokar Dungeon. So it is target farmable. The Dokar Dungeon is not the easiest to do, but it is target farmable. And because of that, it's probably easier to get than, say, 
most random sets in the first place, right? So we're using 4P's Dark One here to have like the bonuses to Bloody Proxy and Bendigo Totem. Now I'm also using the Night Bringer weapon. Night Bringer weapon is really, really strong here because of conversion for Elemental and Acid to Vitality. It's also strong because of CDR. And it's strong because of physical resistance. And on top of that, it has plus two all skills for a conjurer, right? It's crazy good for this build, actually. Now, this one is also target farmable. It is the boss from the fifth dungeon, Tomb of the Heretic, that you have to defeat over and over and over and over and over until you get his weapon, the Nightbringer. Um, if you don't have the Nightbringer, though, you can play this build either with like an offhand and a like a, like an offhand and a what's it called like. Um, this one, right? The Bone Blade, right? This one is really nice for Rally Fox Plus as well. Yeah, you play the Bone Blade, this one is really easy to get, um, like, for example, Mountain, Mountain Deeps, where you get the Bone Spike as well, the Bone Blade. And for the offhand, you can use an item that you get in a dungeon that you have to do anyways to, like, be able to get to Morgoneth in the first place, right? There you go. This is the Halanx's head. This is a target farmable legendary item as well, which drops from, well, Halanx, who's like uh, the boss of one of the three hidden dungeons that you have to do before entering the fifth dungeon, like the fifth roguelike dungeon. And yeah, this is not too hard to get either. The boss is pretty easy to kill, I would say. And you don't really use the Dreek's Evil Eye stuff here, but you have like less CDR to when you go to him, and plus one all skills, basically. It's crazy good for this build. Also, it has S to Vitality conversion as well, but just like the Nightbringer. So yeah, it's pretty nice here. This one is really good as well. Uh, it doesn't have like plus two all skills like the Nightbringer has, but it has like skill modifiers for Devouring Swarm and Bloody Pox, and it's really good here as well. It doesn't have the physical resistance that Nightbringer has, but it has CDR as well. This one is a really nice alternative for Nightbringer if you find this before Nightbringer. If you're lucky and find us, I don't know. This is also a level 84 item, right? So you can use this before Nightbringer as well. And there's also the non mythical version that you might find as well while leveling. I don't know, maybe you find this one, level 58. Really good as well. The Wild Blood Crusher, right? The Wild Blood Crusher gives you plus two shaman. And yeah, pretty nice as well, as you can see. Um, I would say this one is a little bit worse than the Deaths gates actually for this type of build because it doesn't have CDR, it does more attack speed, focus, weapon, and yeah, it doesn't suit the build quite as well, but it's still a pretty nice option. Now for the rings, I am using one mythical signal of the damned. This is a blue item, so it shouldn't be that hard to find. It is harder to keep it and not sell it by accident though. So keep an eye out for this weapon, I mean this ring here. And this one is really good because it gives you plus two wasting. It's like the the sort of reason why I have hard cap wasting on this build in the first place. And also plus two when you go totem, which is like, well, two free points to like put somewhere else instead, right? Uh, the second one is the White Heart. I'm using this over... You can also use like... There are so many good Vitality rings, actually. Like, this one would be a must-have for the end game, And this one is like... You can use, I don't know, Curse Bearer instead. There you go. The Mythical Curse Bearer gives you plus two to vulnerability. So like more DA and with reduction here from vulnerability at the cost of like plus two to possession which gives you like one percent absorption right um so yeah this one's pretty good or you can use the signet of the fallen this one not signet of the damned signet of the fallen there we go this one has another vitality resistance reduction proc as well this one is 15 percent resistant resistance actually so when it comes to resistance reduction this one is actually better than say the void heart but it has like a worse bonus, like Blood Pact is not that great for us, Possession is way better for us, and yeah, because of that, I think Void Heart is actually better here. And also it has Bleed Resistance, which the build also kinda needs, so yeah, this one is a little bit better here. We got the Mythical Pestilence of Dreek, this amulet is a craftable amulet, and it's a little bit RNG, kinda like the Conduits. And because of that I actually don't like it that much, this is where like, um... You can do like some endgame min-maxing tweaking here as well if you have like more of the mats. Um, for beginners, just use like any of these that doesn't convert like your vitality damage to something else. Or you can just use like another blue amulet for example. I don't know, anything that fits your build. Like you have so much freedom here with this build overall. So yeah, I don't know. 
This one is BIS, I would say here, because of the Chaos of Vitality conversion that this specific role that I got here has. Um, but yeah, it's not that easy to get actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can use like anything else that has like plus one occultist or plus one shaman or I don't know, something for resistances as well. Like, this is not a must have, it's just pretty nice to have on top of everything else. Next up, we got for the boots the Void Walker footpaths. These have like bonuses to Scissor of Consumption, Destruction, and Wendigo Totem. So these are actually insane for this build. This is definitely BIS, there's nothing even close to this. Um, because they have like, yeah, they make give me like the easy way to max out Sigil and Destruction, and also more points. So Wendigo Totem means more points put somewhere else, right? Um, the Rhydock Mark of Protection, or like any Rhydock Mark actually. I mean, this one that I have is Demonic of Protection. This one does give me stun, redu stun reduction. And that's pretty crazy good. If you like check out stun without this, it's pretty bad, right? So like the build overall, like the legendary items here, they have like the weakness that they don't have like any stun reduction. So you do want like stun reduction on either the belt or this metal here. Um, one of them is good enough, as you can see I don't have it on my belt. But like two of them would be even better. Like you can get up to 80% max stun resistance here if you have like crazy rolls. If you don't, well you have like only 22, like 25, right? Um, this one has demonic prefix, so demonic actually gives you 30% stun reduction. And of protection gives me like additional DA. Um, but again, like any of this metal will do for the start. Um, but you have to like, I mean, it's pretty nice, right? You can just use any of those, it will fit. But if you far keep on farming them, the build will still become stronger and stronger over time. Like the better of a metal you will find here, right? Also, this is the reason why we have max out the destruction. Plus three to the destruction on this one, really good. Um, next up we got the Neural Valgoth Girdle. I talked about this a bit before. This is kind of a must have because of the elemental to vitality conversion. Mainly because of the Fiend Devotion. Um, but it's also really, really strong for the Sigil. Like, Sigil, Destruction, Fire Damage getting converted to Vitality is... That's not probably even more important than converting the Fire Damage from the Fiend. And yeah, I got the Mighty of the Wolverine, so really nothing special at all. This run just gives me more Physique and some OA. Um, yeah. You will probably find a better one than this pretty easily. Um, now for the Red Egg and the Pants, Bone Weave Legends, just to like help me out again with maxing out Sigil and Venigo Totem. Pretty nice just for the skills. And yeah. Other than that, nothing special. You can use something else here if you don't have this. But it's pretty nice to especially max out the Sigil. Um, the Amulet, Eldritch Pact, plus one Octo Test. If you don't have this yet, just use Blight. I was using Blight for. The majority of my leveling and blight is actually pretty good because blight does not only give you plus one actuators but it also has this aura and this aura does make enemies fumble and that's pretty great like this one doesn't stack with other sources of fumble but the build actually doesn't have any fumble right so this one is crazy good and you can use this even in the end game if you don't have like edge pack like it's fine it's pretty good um, alternative to Eldritch Pact, as always, would be also the Serenity Relic. Right? Serenity Relic is always an option, gives you plus one Shaman on top of that. And yeah, it's pretty solid for like any build. Right? I like the Eldritch Pact though, the ability is pretty nice, and also the Chaos damage on this gets converted to um, Vitality as well. I got a little bit lucky here to roll plus one Destruction on top, but as you can see, this is like. This would, I would be able to hard cap this even without the roll here, um, so yeah, the roll is like not uh, necessary here. Serenity is probably the better relic, like overall. Um, Alright, that's gonna be it for the Grim Tools talk of this character. Let me show you the build in action now. Like the only pot I still have running right now is the freezing pot I used to like for the local dungeon before, but I mean that one is kind of whatever here in this case. I have to be a little bit more careful with energy management here though, like... 
unless I have the energy leech from what's it called? Tip the scale is active, right? My energy region is pretty bad actually. But I mean it's pretty active right now, so it's doing good. We got the Corrupted and Deathly clone now. What is this? Deathly? Tainted? Not too many, like, uh, Monkast clones so far, right? Uh-uh. HP bar is moving there. Which one's gonna form the final form? There we go. The final form. Um, the actual final form as well. Wait, did the others like run away or what happened? I don't know. Where are you going? Do you want to kill me? I guess I don't want to kill me. Yeah, I don't know. Like the um, the confuse of bloody pox seems to sometimes work even against super bosses. I don't know. Is it club? Already theory crafted your next next chart? Nice. What is it gonna be? Why is he spawning here? What the hell? Are you drunk? Gagobot's drunk as well. I think everybody's drunk today. Okay, okay. We got some hits here and there. It didn't increase that number though, it was only like fire shotguns, right? Yeah. It's actually only fire damage that we took here that was uh, Monka's. No big physical hits then. Hello? Hi, click on the chest please, thank you. So we have here Zethris again. Right. Zethris is like the Monka's guy. Um, which did like lots of physical damage, right? But this character has pretty good physics, and because of that, well, you can almost face tank him. Like once he does his RR, though, it gets a little bit monkless, as you could see. Yeah, like this RR ability here reduces your resistances by like 36. 
And then my 50% fizz dress is gone, and then they still hurt, like the boulders still hurt. Zethris? Zethris? No, no, Zethris. Point, I've never played a Shadow Strike build actually, so. And with Morgan Death, uh, the time seems perfect for that. That's sure of right? That's not Zethris. Zethris. So we can just ignore that guy. So we got some dudes here. As you can see. Even Fabius, right? Fabius isn't there. I don't have a lot of Monkas, I would say, but he just killed like some of them already, right? And these fucking uh, stars are Okay, they just died. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Even the usurper, some map room for that here, guys. Map rooms. Oh shit, my casting speed is like negative right now. Look at my character, like so slow at doing anything. Actually, we have Muslaki here, so it was a good thing that I reapplied my freezing potion, right? Otherwise, I would probably die here. Um, with like 0% freeze rest, right? You just die to Mizaki with that. Who's this? Igor? Igor the meme has joined as well? Fuck. Why did they give like Igor two stages here but not um Muzlaki, right? It's weird. That's blood. Oh the shit. I panic clusters that because I don't know, like the yeah, ads I didn't need to cluster there probably. Like this was just uh panic to be honest. This was like way too much panic. For like no reason. I mean, how often do you kill this guy, right? You can only kill him once. So, might as well. Uh, the kill time is pretty good though, right? Like... What? Yeah, he just died. <laughs> I didn't need to use the cluster though. The stuff, right? For the Ravager. Flush. I mean, I might as well reapply those, right? Because why not? Uh, can I receive your gift? I won't stand there and get insults from you, right? Yeah, there we go. Uh, again, like, uh, I mean, this took a little bit longer. So, like, kind of a four minute run, I guess. Ice damage taken 7.4. He wasn't able to crit me, though. 10.3, actually. <laughs> Ravager of Lul. Nah, Ravager was actually a hard boss. But this world is uh, interesting. Kind of gajo now. Uh, I mean, I have to, right? Kind of uh, Ravager is harder than the guy in the desert. Can, no, I would say Kind is harder than Ravager. It it kind of depends though. Like Kind needs like requires you to have better absorption and armor, because Kind has like the sandstorms around you, the the. What is it called? The, the flappy flap attack, right? Those kind of attacks require you to have not only good fizz rust, but also like good um, armor and absorption. And this build has... 
I mean, <laughs> the Swiss has no armor, right? 1.7k armor. And also, no absorption except for 19% 19 here. And then I believe it was some percent from Dark One as well. I mean, Dark One together with this is, I believe, like around... What was it? 27%? Uh, kinda like that, right? Serenity Relic. Just to be safe. I have one here, I could use this one. Alright, let's see here. Color gather, here we go. Ha! <laughs> Imagine face thinking her. Lul Dude, your slow is like, what the hell? I don't know, man. <laughs> Holy... <laughs> this is not even stage 2, right? Yeah, this is where you need armor, like, you need armor for Kalagadra, and that's the thing. Like, her hits deal like so much damage. Holy, like, that is... <laughs> I don't know about this. I feel like kiting her, like, killing her with a kiting build is just like the way to go, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, let's, let's not do it on this character. Let's do it on the Warlord instead. Right? We should try it on the Warlord instead. This is a, this is a, I don't know, this is just... Stupid, right? Like, Kalagaja, without armor. <laughs> Pussy out. <laughs> Kinda debating me, guys. Hey, there is she. Hello? Hello? Oh, there she is. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, let's try to kite, then. Can we kite with this build, even? Is it even possible? The thing is, like, she can't one-shot me, right? Like, my first rest is way too high for that. Like, she can't one-shot me. But she can, like, shotgun. That's what... Like, if I'm gonna die here, it's gonna be to shotgun. And against that, I guess Serenity Relic would've been nice to have. But, like, Serenity Relic would mean even, even less uh, damage, right? What the hell, dude? Okay, how to not cluster 101. I mean, I should have just aborted, but there we go. You got your beta. You got, you got your beta. You got your beta. Yep, I definitely got traded there by chat, <laughs> but I mean, in the end it was just my fault, like, I didn't cluster there, I fucked that fight up, that happens in hardcore sometimes. Sadly, it happened with probably one of, if not the best build I ever made, um, that Dark One and Nightbringer Conjurer is really, really strong. I was unfortunately not able to take it into, like, Crucible 170 Gladiator or, like, SR 65 or even higher. I would have probably done that after the Kalagadra kill. Definitely. Um, but you guys like this build so much that you were gonna try it as well. And maybe give me some feedback on how the build will do in Crucible 170 Gladiator and higher SR shards as well. Now, since this is like my last video of this year, 2019, I do want to take my time here and say thank you to everybody watching on YouTube and on Twitch throughout the last year. It has been an amazing year for me for, well, streaming Grim Dawn with you guys together. I want to say thank you to everybody. And also special thanks to Ren Furious for doing my Twitch emotes for me. Also, thank you so much, Circle of Life, for 
I don't know, basically being my biggest sponsor so far. And yeah, thank you so much, everybody. I wish you a happy new year. And hopefully, yeah, you're gonna have a nice new year, even, even better year 2020 than 2019. Oh yeah, my personal resolutions for the new year were, well, at least for Grim Dawn, are number one, don't forget, just don't get hit. Number two is take your time with your builds, because sometimes if you get like ahead of yourself, you might just die and not hit that cluster button, you know. Take your time to remind yourself over and over again to always hit that cluster button and use it if you need it. And don't be too greedy with it. There are enough clusters, there's only one character. Um, I mean there are more characters, because we just play for stash, right? But you know what I mean. And number three, don't ever get debated by chat. Also, thank you so much everybody for watching this specific video. Um, don't worry, the new year is gonna bring more new builds and awesome builds and also more and awesome videos hopefully as well. Hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more in the next year and I hope to see you around.